This time on the show, rogue DHCP server detection, the top ultra software, and more. I'm Shannon Morse, and you are watching Hack 5. This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Netflix, GoToAssist Express, Remote Support Made Easy, and Domain.com. Got a great idea? It all starts with a great domain. Hello and welcome to Hack Five. My name is Darren Kitchen, and I'm Paul Tobias. And I'm I'm over. I'm getting. I'm a think. I think this is the last day of my cold. You said that yesterday. Well, all right. I woke up and I still kind of had it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna really try not to do that in the A block. Yeah. So, um, but oh, great episode today. We have the very first snubs report, right? Yeah, the snubs. I, I've, I've watched a little preview of it. it yeah. Looked, yeah. Yeah, I'm she's excited. done. She she's done really. Yeah. <laughs> well, she did really well with the lighting and everything. So we'll have a little bit of Shannon on uh, a little later. Uh, I am back from the British Isles. Yeah, how That's, was jolly old England? Uh, it's good. Good. Uh, the weather sucked. Uh, <laughs> I've seen the pictures. Yes. Yeah, I was riding through uh, rain and well, you chose sleet. I actually went the sleet. winter to yeah. go to England. It I was mean. my birthday. <laughs> it, Get a better birthday. I, you're right, Mom. <laughs> Why'd you do that? Nine months minus February. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> it's his fault too. Anyway, point being. But how was the actual driving? It was over good. Because there? There you're this, on the other side of the road, which I mean, you're driving into traffic. To be honest, that was not the difficult part. Uh, I just kept on saying in my head, "Drive on the left. Drive on the left. Not a big deal." And once you get on the motorway, it's like whatever, right? There's a there's a divider, but. Um, but when it first got on, and I'm, I, where, where you, we've driven through Toronto before in yeah, Canada. Yeah, yeah. We're, you're, we're used you're the... to, yeah. Well, they don't drive on the left, but we're used to, you know, European things like uh, kilometers per hour and stuff like it. So I get on there, and I'm looking at like I'm like, oh, oh wow, okay. So, all right, 50, no problem. I'm gonna stay in the right lane. Right lane's the slow lane. Go 50, 50 kilometers an hour, no problem. Why is everybody on my ass? <laughs> So once I realized I was going half the speed limit in the wrong, you know, in the fast lane. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I got that all figured out. But uh, no, it was actually absolutely brilliant. The, the, the road between Sheffield and Manchester was the most gorgeous I've ever ridden on, bar none, absolutely, even though I was riding in the snow. So like, I'm riding like this. But and you then, kept driving while you're in the country. You didn't have to stop and meet the locals, right? No, no, I didn't. Well, I had to stop for some sheep that were crossing the road. Because those are the locals, you those know? Those are the locals, yeah. <laughs> I literally was counting sheep. I'm not nodding off. I'm just like, there were so many fracking sheep, especially in north of Wales. But, but like, I'm riding like this with, like, one hand on the uh, accelerator and one hand just doing like this, like, swiping my, my helmet. The biggest, biggest problem. But other than that, absolutely brilliant. Had a phenomenal time. Uh, and and I, I was so worried about riding through London, like, the city proper. It was actually a breeze. Uh, oh, yeah? yeah, there was traffic stopped on the, uh, the M4, I think, for like two miles straight, and I got to take the bus lane. No one's on it. The Just bus me. lane. Yeah, it's like the version of the HOV, but okay. only, you know, cocky buses motorcyclists. And, oh, no, no, there's no buses that take the bus lane. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and you can lane split, so when traffic gets bad, you can get okay. in between the cars. You can do that in California too. I'll find that I've out. I've yet to learn how month. to drive the motorcycle, so I oh, that sounds. Oh, dangerous. it's great. It's no, no, it's not. It's not dangerous at all when you're when they're going really slow and you're just going 10, 15, 20 in between everyone. It's great. Uh, I didn't have to pay congestion charges while I was in. I just watched something on that. That just sounds ridiculous. That you have to pay for the traffic. It's got to really suck if you live in that congestion thing. It's like wake up in the morning. Ah, uh, yep, yeah, and eight, yeah, there goes eight pounds. <laughs> um, but, uh, but the coolest thing was the bike box. And I know that they've got this in Thailand, but they also have this in, in Britain, and, and it's the coolest thing. So you come up to the roundabout, because they can't do intersections, they just want to drive in circles, and right before the, the light is this green box for bicycles, but also scooters and motorbikes can use it. So you lane split all the way up the line, so there's like all these fracking cars that you skip all the way by, and then you get to get in the start. So you're always the first one <laughs> off the line. Jesus. And you can skip the green light, too. Oh yeah. Okay, so in the, uh, I know this is totally Skip not what you tuned into. Life. This is not what you tuned into Hack Five for. You're probably expecting some technology soon, and I promise it's coming. But but let me just get off this rant real quick. So you know how in the states it's like you know it's green, 
and then it's going to go yellow before it goes red. Well, it also in, in, in there, they blink yellow before they go green, letting you know, hey, we're about to go green, oh. but if it happens to be clear, go ahead and blow through. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, it's oh, excellent. Well. So let's get back onto the tech stuff. What what do we have coming up? Well, I did need to mention something about the DHCP rogue servers that we were talking about last week with yeah. Robin Wood. Um, it turns out our very own Tim Ashley, a member of our forums, has written together an awesome tool here for detecting possible rogue DHCP servers on your land. It's a Windows tool. Pretty easy to fire it up. Uh, go over to timashley.me. And uh, that's where you can find it, yeah. Okay. Um, well, you you had a problem with uh, your helmet that I remember you bitching about as soon as you came back. <laughs> because I'm like, where's where I, where's your little fucking thing? Well, like, I didn't take as much video as I had hoped just because I was going through a lot of rain, sleet, and snow. Yeah, um, but I figured you would have had something. I know, I had mentioned, and I was so happy that... I got a couple of clips in Dublin, but, uh, but yeah, normally... My, uh, my camera sits right here, right? And I had actually modded the helmet somewhat where I took out this little piece of plastic that sat here. And it turns out that that little piece of plastic, quite important. I hadn't run into this problem before in the summer, but it turns out in the winter what it's for is to keep your breath like from not going onto the back yeah. of the, the, the uh, visor here. So while it was like grit and salt and, and, and snow and stuff on the outside of my visor, it was fog on the inside. So I was pretty much riding with my visor like half open the whole time, tears going down my eyes and snot dripping down my nose. Not a pretty sight, but it was still, you know, excellent fun, 770 miles. I don't know how any of this sounds fun, but <laughs> it, it was okay. It was a challenge. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't what you would consider. It was a just a real, holiday. real man just driving in the winter. I in figured the out snow what it was made of. Yeah, with stuff. Yeah. everywhere on the CBF six hundred, getting sick. You know, but it was worth it. I keep telling myself that because I got back to thirteen voicemails and find out I was retroactively canned. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, well, well, we're still doing hack five. Woohoo! Hence the canning, we had to start <laughs> selling stuff. We're on one camera now. And no, 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 I've, I've we have the no, other cameras. I left the other tripod the at. Set. <laughs> We've ripped stuff off the wall. Pirates came and, and they... Soon the lights will be going out. <laughs> Pirates came and they stole part we of the set. we got to sell this. No, stop it. Gotta, no. It's all got to go. No, stop it. we got to finish the show. You can't tear it down yet. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, but yeah, yeah, keep an eye out on the hack shop if you're looking for some hack five stuff. Some uh, we were uh, the part of the set's actually already been taken. Well, so. it could easily become a set for anybody. Yeah, there you go. For the right price. There uh, you go. Yeah, 190k, and you can have the hack house. <laughs> uh, I mentioned let's... I mentioned in 701 we're gonna you know the transitions and everything, and then I said I'm gonna go on a vacation, and I didn't know that my employer was gonna give me a little kick in the boot. Yeah, but uh, so then I found out that me and half the other employees, they just can't afford to pay anymore. Well. Oh, well. Uh, so that's it. Yeah. yeah. So thanks, let's... everybody, for showing up at the meetups. Had a fabulous time. And let's go ahead and just uh, kick it off proper. Find out what's going on with the LAN party. Shannon. Our next LAN party, powered by the Varsity Esports League, is Left 4 Dead. We'll be playing on Saturday, March 27th at game.hack5.org. And a special shout out to The Vessel for their LAN party support. You can find all their information at thevessel.com or follow them on Twitter at the underscore vessel. See you guys in the game and a word from our sponsor. If you're looking for an easy and affordable way to get your website online, check out Domain.com's hosting plans. Their deluxe hosting plan offers unlimited traffic and free website builders with unlimited pages for just $8.75 a month. Already have a domain somewhere else? Support Hack5 and our sponsor by transferring your domain to Domain.com. It's only $6.99 a year to transfer your domain, plus you get an entire extra year. With Domain.com, you get registration without the BS. No totally unrelated upsells, no deceptive renewal pricing. Just blistering fast DNS and hosting, the lowest prices on the web, and the highest quality. Thanks to Hack5 fans, Domain.com is one of the fastest growing domain and hosting companies in the world. Don't forget to use coupon code HAK5 at checkout to get 15% off your order. Got a great idea? It all starts with a great domain. Domain.com Application sandboxing. Can it really save users from themselves? This week, Darren is taking two free sandboxes and taking them on a spin around the red light district with 
Internet Explorer 6. Ugh. But first, what is application sandboxing? Thank you, DK. Take it away. Right. Now imagine that this playground is your hard drive. And this adorable, lovable monkey here is the retarded Internet Explorer 6. I mean, sure, you could let him run ape shit, but you'd end up with poo flung everywhere and in your registry, and eventually your system would run as a crawl. I mean, remember, this monkey represents IE6. What a whore. So, since we can't tame the monkey, let's go ahead and restrict him to this sandbox. Let him fling poo and get herpes all he wants. Meanwhile, your hard drive and your registry are absolutely clean. And when you're done, it's just simply a matter of taking out the litter and replacing it with a fresh, poo-free sandbox. It's a novel idea, but does it work? So to find out, I've taken two free sandboxing solutions to the internet's famous red light district. There's actually nothing in this. I don't know why I'm holding it. First up is Komodo's Internet Security 4 release candidate. You can pick it up with registration at the Komodo forums. It installs fairly simply, offering secure DNS and to opt into its premier club of paranoid virus-fearing nitwits. A simple reboot later and you're off. Sort of. It's unclear how the sandboxing feature works in this new version, so I went poking around. Now the program itself isn't exactly what I would call intuitive. I mean, sure, the antivirus and firewall bits all seem to be in order, but where is the sandboxing feature? Right-clicking on the system icon reveals that it's enabled, but that's not all that reassuring. Back in the control center, I poked around the More heading. Nope. Defense Plus? Yeah, there it is. Sandboxing. So, with all this, I can choose what programs are in the sandbox and toy around with the settings or specifically run as program in the sandbox. Now, the sandbox settings were lacking imagination. The sandbox security setting let me choose from enabled or disabled. Why was it a slider? I mean, that kind of suggests that there are more settings, but there's not. It's just on or off. So what was wrong with the checkbox? I digress. If you really want to find the fiddly bits, you have to enter the Programs in the Sandbox menu. And from there, you can add a program and finally get some sort of explanation about what the levels of sandboxing are. Untrusted, restricted, limited, and unrestricted. And if that's not insightful enough, there's a help button, which is broken. So let's just go meet the competition. Sandboxy. Its slogan, Trust No Program. It's been around for a while, and we may have even featured it on the show, but with other 350 segments who could keep track. Still, let's put it to the test. First, getting set up. A brain-dead installer followed by a simple enough application that sort of mimics a task manager. You can create multiple sandboxes and from within there run programs, whatever you'd like. Opening the whore that is IE6 was made simple by a desktop shortcut, and any arbitrary program can just be run in the sandbox by right-clicking on the icon in Explore, and it's got a little integration there in the context menu. And yes, of course I had to try running Sandboxy in Sandboxy, and no, that did not work. So now that we've got two sandbox Windows VMs, let's add a third as a control with no protection whatsoever and then send all three monkeys off on a couple of challenges set by the fine folks over at irc.hack5.org. So first up, to find a serial key for Battlefield 2142. And while we're not one to promote software piracy, we will browse blatant scam sites in the name of science. Remember kids, winners don't do wares. Our Komodo VM started by launching iExplore.exe in an untrusted sandbox, which was an adventure in itself. With all the hourglasses, it might be 2142 by the time we actually start browsing here. When we finally did find the keygen crack serial wares thingy, we were prompted to install an ActiveX program. So we did, and eventually we were offered a dubious zip file which we saved to our desktop, but it wasn't there. A glance with Explorer showed that the file in question didn't exist. Downloading again in Internet Explorer showed that it was there. Obviously the Komodo Sandbox was working, but what about Sandboxy? Sandboxy's Internet Explorer was also hit by the same ActiveX program, which we promptly accepted, and moments later we were downloading the crack serial keygen thingy, which Sandboxy offered to immediately recover. Before running the program, we ran it through VirusTotal.com to see what it contained, and sure enough it was busting at the seams with backdoors, trojans, hack tools, you name it. And of course we ran it. Sandboxed. No obvious signs of infection so far, but how is our unpatched system handling? Not very well. Things started out fair finding a crack, but along the way we were bombarded with ActiveX requests. Soon our browser had extra toolbars, and without warning we were downloading popular screensavers and hunky guys started showing up on our desktop wallpaper. No matter, we had found our crack serial setup thingy, 
and moments later we were bobbing our heads to the cheerful chiptunes of keygen music. And then things turned for the worse. DLLs started crashing and consoles started popping up and then we were greeted by this new XP antivirus program and for just $50 we could have six months of protection from this evil spyware. With our sandbox VMs still alive, we set off for the second challenge, which involved a monkey, some bananas, and something called the Lesbian Spank Inferno. The internet is Suffice it to say, after a half hour of research, it was time to check on the VMs. The Komodo Protected Internet Explorer 6 crashed a few times, one time displaying a message about malware or something. So we clicked OK and it restarted IE6 and took us to a page with an animated GIF that looked like antivirus or something. And it offered us a file to download, which we tried to say yes, but once again, Komodo wouldn't let us touch the file system. Sandboxy, on the other hand, allowed us to download the file, which was great because we were greeted with a nice little dialogue telling us that the security tool had successfully installed. Hooray! This security tool told us that we had 26 infections and for just $80, we could have a lifetime software license and a security tune-up for only $30 more and lifetime premium support for an extra 20 bucks. Using Internet Explorer is really expensive. I decided to keep surfing unprotected, and the security tool even offered to save a report. So what was this report? Well, a text file of file names and descriptions of various Trojans. So let's check the scoreboard. Internet Explorer 6 with no sandboxing at all, completely hosed. Uh, Sandboxy fared okay in the where's round, but then picked up something nasty in the bow chicka wow wow department, and Komodo is still run smooth. So what we decided for our last test was what we really needed for these boxes were some Windows updates. And to lend a hand in an awesome link, we got ours from Mark from Hack5's very own IRC. gbgamers.co.cc slash update. Yeah, that's the Windows update address all right. So let's fire it up and see how they fare. The unprotected IE6 box wasn't going anywhere anytime soon. And the sandboxy box, well, it browsed to the fake Windows Update page, no problem. Downloaded the critical update.exe and even, you know, ran it, no problem. Just terminated unexpectedly. Go figure. So how did Komodo do? Well, just as before, the file system virtualization kicked in and nothing actually downloaded or touched the file system. So what's our conclusion? Well, obviously, if you're trying to get owned, IE6 is the ticket. And if you're just looking for some basic Sandboxing. Sandbox is actually not a bad choice. Just keep in mind it's going to allow you to save files back to your actual file system very easily, which is a good and bad thing. Just mainly don't do any of that and you should be okay. And if you're a complete noob, Komodo actually might even save you from yourself. Or, you know, maybe put it on your mom's system with Firefox or Chrome and keep it updated and, well, I don't even need to go there. And uh, I guess at this point, I'm going to go ahead and toss it over to Shannon to see what's going on with trivia. This week's trivia is, this internet protocol is used by hosts to retrieve IP address assignments and other configuration information, such as default gateway, domain name, and DNS servers. Enter for your chance to win Ashley Schwartz's DVD, Hackers Are People Too, by submitting your answer to hack5.org slash trivia. Good luck and a word from our sponsor. Yeah, I know. Okay, hold on. Hey, my sister just got a Windows 7 computer and she needs your help? Yeah, I'm busy making Wi-Fi pineapples. Come on, it'll just take a second. She just got this computer with Windows 7 on it and it didn't come with a CD. And after her Vista box blew up, she's afraid that she won't be able to restore her stuff. Not interested. I made you a cocktail. Ooh. The other kind of pineapple. All right, how's this? You finish soldering these battery packs, I'll fix your sister's computer. Hey, Brittany? Solder? Yeah. Yeah, Brittany, it's the easiest thing in the world. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, just click the link I sent you in the email. Great, I'm on your computer. Okay, all you have to do is click start and type in REC disk and hit enter. Uh huh. And just pop a blank CD in and click create. All right, when it's done burning, just be sure to keep that CD in a safe place. And if your computer ever gets hosed, just boot off that to repair Windows. Yeah, no problem. Take care. Hey, are you finished yet? No, it's going to be quite a bit longer, so just keep making those pineapples for me. Oh. 
Hello? Hmm. If you want to support more clients by spending less money, try the new GoToAssist Express. Amaze your clients by resolving problems instantly from anywhere. Reduce travel time and lower your support costs by fixing problems over the internet. With GoToAssist Express from Citrix, you get 24-7 free customer service and can even provide unattended support. No need for the customer to be at their computer. Best of all, GoToAssist Express sessions are 128-bit encrypted end-to-end, -end, so no worries about having your cookies stolen. Try it free for 30 days at gotoassist.com slash hak5. View more great Windows 7 tips at revision3.com slash gotoassistexpress. A few weeks ago, I was talking to Shannon, and I mentioned how I thought something was KRAD Ultra Elite. And this, of course, led to a tangent about how dead Leet speak is, and cool like KEWL, and software codec megapacks, and notepad++ plus 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 now with more ASCII. So to find out just how relevant software of this nature is, Shannon went on a mission to find the very best Windows Ultra software. Take it away, snubs. Thanks, Darren. So I set off recently to find out if there's any merit to all of these titles that claim to be Ultra. There's a couple of rules that I set. The first one, it has to be Windows, and it has to be free, like freeware or open source, or shareware, like a trial version. So let's set off and check out the five top Ultra K-Rad Elite Super Ultra software for Windows. Number five is the Super Ultra K-Rad Elite Ultra Screensaver Maker. You can find this at ultrascreensavermaker.com. It's pretty basic what it does. You can fire it up, toss in a whole bunch of pictures of mom and the cat and the dog and the children and the hamster and the rat and the snake and whatever else you have. Toss in a very nice legal mp3, add in some transitions and a text effect that says, I love you, mommy, and then send it off to your mom for Mother's Day after you click one button. Bam, you have a screensaver. You can try it for free for 21 days or for $20 you can keep it forever and send your mom those every year. Uh, to be honest, I would probably save the 20 bucks and give my mom something that actually is very useful and then make her a free slideshow. I'm going to pass on this one. Number four is Pong Ultra. Sounds pretty sweet, huh? It's pongu.sourceforge.net. This is the only Pong game that I know of where you have a level editor and power-ups, but I don't really need know why you would need power-ups. The website hasn't been updated since 2003, which is fairly obvious, and it doesn't work on Windows 7, so sorry everybody that's already upgraded. The package is also missing the alleged 40.dll file for some reason. Uh, it does work on DOS, so you can play it on the 386, but myself, I'm just going to power up my old Atari and play it on there because it's a ton easier and I don't need no power-ups. Number three is the Ultra Network Analyzer. It's basically a protocol analyzer that helps you figure out any kind of problems that you may be experiencing on your network. But to be honest, it's so full of fail, it's not even funny. Just save yourself 30 bucks for the standard license or $2.99 for the site license. Just go download Wireshark. Use that program to figure out any kind of problems you have and save yourself some money. Number two is Ultra VNC, which you can find at uvnc.com. It's basically just that. It's a VNC that allows you to remote into a server and fix any problems you may be experiencing. It's ideal for remote access into s servers on a secured network in conjunction with a secure layer, such as SSH or VPN. Other than that, it's a little bit insecure and it's a bit cumbersome for my liking. And number one is Ultra Defrag, which you can find at ultradefrag.sourceforge.net. First of all, it has fast disk optimization, which means it sticks all the data at the beginning of the disk. And second, you can right click on just one file or a series of files or a series of folders and just defragment those. Why spend hours on end defragmenting your entire disk when you can just do the couple of files that you need to organize? And third, you can schedule defrags, which is very nice so you don't have to sit around manually and defrag everything by hand. All in all, very nice piece of software. I can actually see myself using this one a lot. Is that a bug? So I would say two out of the five were somewhat useful. The Ultra VNC was pretty nice, well-rounded piece of equipment, and Ultra Defrag was a pretty cool piece of program. I could see myself using that one quite a bit, but I wouldn't consider either one Ultra. 
If you think you have an ultra piece of software or something KRAD super ultra mega secret elite that you want me to see, email me at feedback at hack5.org and I'll make sure to check it out. Thank you and a word from our sponsor. Netflix delivers movies directly to your home, saving you time, money, and hassle. As a Netflix Unlimited member, you get DVDs by mail in about one business day. Plus, you can instantly watch thousands of TV episodes and movies, stream directly to your PC, Mac, or right to your TV via a Netflix-ready device like the Xbox 360, PS3, and soon the Nintendo Wii console. Watch as many movies as you want. Shipping is free, and there are no late fees or due dates. Keep the movies as long as you like. DVDs by mail, plus instantly write to your TV. Get unlimited movies two ways for only $8.99 a month. As a new member and a Hack5 viewer, you can get a two-week free trial membership. Go to www.netflix.com slash HAK5 and sign up now. Be sure to use this URL so that they know we sent you. If you've got the techno lust, be sure to subscribe to Hack5 on YouTube or iTunes, or both. You could do that. And remember to follow us on Twitter and Facebook, grab some Hack5 swag from the Swag Merchandise Store, or send us your feedback at feedback at hack5.org. We love to hear the good and bad, and oftentimes your ideas make it onto the show. Until next week, I'm Shannon Morse. You're watching Hack5. Trust your technolust.